chances are you know somebody who suffers from hearing loss, and in fact, it affects one and a half billion people worldwide, including singer-songwriter Paul Simon, who came to Stanford to look for answers. My hearing loss started about three years ago, and it was gradual in the left ear. What I'm seeing is a beautiful-looking eardrum. And Could be I'm... an album cover. <laughs> At a certain point, when my hearing loss was about 50% in this year, I chose to have a procedure done, and the procedure m made it much worse. The numbers are staggering to me. Yes. 1.5 billion people suffer from hearing loss. One out of six individuals across the globe have hearing loss. It's a huge invisible disability. That ear to that shoulder, perfect. When we say hearing loss, roughly we group it into two types of hearing loss. One is called conductive hearing loss. Conductive hearing loss implies that there is a problem with the eardrum or the hearing bones or fluid behind the eardrum or disease process in the middle ear. For these types of hearing loss, surgery can be very effective, even curative. The bigger problem is the inner ear and its connection to the brain. That is called sensory neural hearing loss. And right now, in terms of treatment options, we are really limited to two types of devices. On one hand, it's hearing aids that help people typically with mild to moderate hearing loss. On the other end of the spectrum, it's cochlear implants, which are devices that electrically restore hearing to those who are profoundly deaf. Tell me about the research that's going on to cure or treat hearing loss. In terms of very exciting things that are happening now, they uh, include all sorts of areas from structural biology, understanding the nitty gritty of how these sensory cells work and how the little hairs that they have sticking on top of them deflect in response to sound and what makes that machinery work. Another one is genetics and really that gene therapy can effectively restore hearing is a major milestone. Is this kind of common? I mean, is it being done a lot or rather? This is the, the hottest uh, topic not right now in gene therapy. Gene therapy is happening, but for a very, very specific and very rare type of hearing loss. We seldom get to hear scientists talk about what they do. It's kind of a mystery to everybody. It's good to know that. With all this research, all these um, attempts to cure and treat hearing loss, you still have hope. Oh, quite a bit. Quite a bit of hope. When you were speaking earlier with Tina in the clinic, you had mentioned having dreams, talking about your hearing loss. Oh, yes. You know, and then waking up and, and then facing the reality. I kind of, I was on the same page with you because sometimes I have dreams about, I got my hearing back. Right. You know, and then you wake up. Right. And it's still the same. So I'm just wondering for you, sorry. <laughs> no, I I'm understand just completely. For you how it's been like. Yeah, exactly. It's taken me three years to accept that I have a disability. It's now, it's now appearing in my dreams as a, as a description of me. Everybody has uh, a period of denial and, uh, and then you come to grips with it the best you can and say, well, what's available to help me? There was some denial of myself and then there was like, this will pass. I'll get my hearing back and, and yeah, you, I still something think will that. change, right? I Is still, that how you felt? I still feel, yeah, I can, I can imagine getting my hearing back or I think, wow, how, how great it would be now if I could, how I just took it for granted. Yep. I won't be able to hear everything that I used to hear, but I'll be able to hear, hopefully, enough to be able to do a performance and that's something for me to look forward to, so. Absolutely, absolutely. It's very exciting in terms of the critical mass of investigators here at Stanford and across the world because it's really the community of investigators, researchers, clinicians working together to facilitate and accelerate progress and hopefully come up with breakthroughs that are transformative and help our patients who are desperately asking for help.